The word Jakba means different things to different people, but tonight's discussion is not about Nigerians who are living in the diaspora. Our focus tonight is how much Nigerians living in the diaspora send to Nigeria. Babajide Ogunson, founder of Leadership by Data and Channel Television's data consultant, is here to share insights about this syndrome. Hello, Babajide. It's good to have you on the news at 10. And it's good to know that you are not part of the Jakba squad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So globally, I mean, what is the situation of remittances? We've said it's not about those living there. It is about how much they send to Nigeria. Uh, yes, globally. But before we talk about the global situation of remittances, globally, today is also Mother's Day. Um, and, you know, um, the next time we'll be having a Mother's Day on a Sunday like this will be 2031. Oh. A long time. So um, quickly allow me to on the behalf of all Nigerians wish all Nigerian women happy Mother's Day. And also on behalf of myself and my brother to wish our mother a happy Mother's Day and let her know that she's watching and we really appreciate how she's um, impacted our lives. Okay. So now we can go into global okay. remittances. <laughs> so the situation with global remittances, um, um, Anne, is it is extremely important to understand the situation, first of all, the global situation in the world, how remittances flows from citizens living in diaspora. Then, after looking at that position, we we'll look at the situation in Africa. And then, perhaps the most important will be what is the situation in Nigeria. So, let's take a look at what is the state of global remittances in the world, and where is Nigeria on the ladder of remittances inflow? How much Nigeria, how many Nigerians send remittances, and what is the value? The answer is right in front of us. On the world ladder, for last year, it showed from the World Bank the situation of global remittances. $860 billion was sent from families living outside their countries to families in their countries. First on that list is India. $125 billion got into India from Indians living outside India. Mexico, number two. $67 billion came into Mexico from Mexicans living outside Mexico. And look at where Nigeria is, number ninth. Such a big, big um, impact. Nigerians living outside Nigeria in 2023 sent over $20 billion into Nigeria. So globally, we see that situation that, yes, Nigeria is among the top 10 countries where their citizens are trying to reach out to their um, families within Nigeria. And yes, we see that inflows are huge. The inflows are huge and creating a lot of impact, helping with the stability of the economy, helping with managing rising inflation, helping with managing poverty, helping with even education, because a lot of these remittances are used for things that will impossible, possibly impact the lives of the families that they are sending the monies to. All right, so we've talked to the numbers now. How much, I know you have said it has impacted uh, several sectors of the economy, but talking about stability in low income or less developed countries, how does this work? So, you know, I talked about that big number, $860 billion um, remittances coming across the globe. The evidence shows that most of these remittances ends up in low income countries, less developed economies. So in, in other words, you're not seeing um, this money is flowing into the advanced economies. These monies are really going back into countries like Africa and less developed economies to help families and to help um, their colleagues and friends to develop, especially in Africa. Um, in this, this situation in Africa, if we take a look at it, yes, we've said Nigeria is ninth in terms of re re receiving remittances globally. But in Africa, the only country that receives more remittances than Nigeria in Africa is Egypt. Let's take a look at that list. Um, the top 10 countries in Africa that receive remittances across the world. And what you'll notice is Egypt stands at number one, closely followed by Nigeria. Then we have Morocco, Ghana, Kenya, and up to Somalia. But what you notice is you see a major difference between the inflows in the top three countries in Africa. I'm talking about Egypt, Nigeria, Morocco. That is where most of these remittances coming from every other country below Morocco, annual remittances less than 
10 billion dollars per year. So the only countries in Africa currently receiving remittances in excess of 10 billion dollars per annum, Egypt, Nigeria, Morocco. That also allows you to know the extent of how many of their citizens have jackpot. <laughs> All right. But uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria recently confirmed that the remittances in February were significantly higher than the one in January when we compare both. Does this mean that their policies are working somehow? Clearly, the Central Bank started off um, with a lot, of, a lot of citizens had concerns about will their policies work. However, what we've seen is the policy on allowing, trying to unify the exchange rate, the policy of allowing citizens, especially if you receive your remittances, you can now get it in, in, in Naira, you can get it in dollars, and you can even get it in Naira. And the Naira exchange rate that you'll get your money will be close to the black, the parallel market rate. So what we see is a lot of Nigerian families abroad are getting more comfortable to send their remittances now through the official channel. So for the government, for the central bank, this clearly is a pass mark. Um, but what we also have seen by looking at the insights and analysis of the remittances is beyond the remittance inflow, it allows us to see that Nigerians are actually more involved in assisting Nigerians than foreigners in assisting Nigerians. And what do I mean? I would like us to take a look at comparing remittances into Nigeria in the last five years and comparing capital inflow into Nigeria, because capital inflow into Nigeria is actually foreigners trying to help Nigeria, and then remittances are Nigerians trying to help Nigeria. Take a look at what has happened between 2015 and 2023. Remittances to Nigeria from Nigerians, $187 billion since the APC government came in. Capital imported into Nigeria since 2015, less than a hundred billion dollars, just 93 billion dollars. But that's not the insight. The insight is take a look at what has happened since 2020. 2020, Nigerian remittances, remittances to Nigeria, 17 billion dollars. In 2021, Nigerians sent even more money, helping the country, 19, over 19 billion dollars. 2022, it got better, 20.1 billion dollars. Last year, approximately $20.5 billion. In simple terms, on an annual basis, if you look at it from 2020, every year Nigerians keep sending remittances and those numbers are growing consistently. However, look at the next column, capital imported into Nigeria, which we could use as a proxy for how much foreigners are continuously in, in, in investing in Nigeria. Same period, 2020, only $9.6 billion. 2021, it declined, 6.7. 2022, a further decline, $5 billion. And 2023, $3.9 billion. In simple terms, in the last four to five years, Nigerians keep sending money from abroad. Foreign capital importation keeps declining. The insight here is that there are opportunities for us to understand that Nigerians living in diaspora, yes, jackpot, however, they are helping and developing the economy. That is one area we need to explore and even exploit. Capital importation, important, but what we've seen from these numbers is remittances have a bigger role to play in Nigeria's prosperity and development than capital importation. And all right. Thank you very much, Abajide Ogunso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's Data Consultant, for your time. Pleasure is all mine. I wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day, but I don't know if that is the right title, but I know what I'll wish you sometime soon.